Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, Tulsa's source for great gardens, southwoodgardencenter.com and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on Oklahoma Gardening, we have a special visit to Canadian County, Oklahoma. OSU Extension Horticulture Educator Courtney Keck shows off the demonstration garden at the Extension Office. We also tour the Pew's beautiful garden on the prairie. We check out the Wild Horse Gardens in Mustang, Oklahoma, and Barbara Brown cooks spinach and mushrooms. visit a county that's very near and dear to me as we go back to Canadian County where I was the former horticulture educator and seeing firsthand what a dedicated group of master gardeners can do as they transform a community. Courtney Keck, the current Canadian County horticulture educator, is going to tour us around the county. Hi, my name is Courtney Keck and I'm the horticulturist for Canadian County Cooperative Extension Service um, that's out in El Reno in Canadian County and this is our extension office. Um, as you can see we're pretty exposed out here, lots of sun and lots of wind. Um, there's not really a lot of trees out here, it's more of a prairie type land. Uh, and out front here we have some demonstration uh, gardens and that used to be just all boxwood out front on both sides of the doors with a couple of raised beds, but we changed it a couple years ago, so this is all fairly new. This is still a work in progress out here. Uh, as you can see, there's some desert willows that aren't quite at maturity yet. They're still growing and I'm still pruning them up to be trees here. And right now they're more shrub-like. And um, every now and then I'll get some new plants to put in. The, the, the containers in front of the office are always changed out and it's kind of an experiment to see what would do well in this exposure and what won't. Um, so it's something I like to do out here and I've also labeled all of the plants so that people walking in, our clientele can tell what's what. Um, and I've had quite a few questions on some of our plants. Um, asking what they are, and so I think it's a success so far. Okay. Uh, here in Canadian County, uh, my job as a horticulturist, it's never mundane. I do a lot of different things. Uh, I love to write, so I write for Oklahoma Gardener Magazine. I write news articles occasionally, um, and I also answer clientele questions. People call or walk in the office. I do a lot with our Master Gardener volunteers, coordinating the program, helping facilitate it, helping it run smoothly. Um, we have about 60 active volunteers here in the county. We're always looking for more. It's a pretty laid back group and I enjoy that. Uh, they're a good group of gardeners to work with. And um, I'm trying to get them incorporated into some of this educational gardening out front of our office. And we'll see how that blossoms in a few years. So like I said, this is still fairly new. Um, right now, this time of year, I'm really working on uh, getting our Master Gardener training class that's coming up this fall, getting it coordinated, getting it uh, finalized, and getting our speakers finalized, uh, creating all the handouts and all of the paperwork that goes into that, and interviewing students over the next few well, weeks, um, or our ap applicants, that people that have uh, applied for our class. And we have a couple of volunteers, Master Gardener volunteers, that help coordinate um, all of our handouts, all of our materials for the class week by week. And so that's what I'm doing right now, but we're also preparing for our county fair coming up in August. Uh, it's usually about the third week of August, and our uh, Master Gardener volunteers have a booth 
during that time for three days out of the four days of the county fair. And so we get a lot of exposure that way. Um, lots of clientele questions are coming in about, um, about diseases and insect problems. You'll see that with the heat right now. Um, with the drought conditions, we're not getting a lot of rain like we have in the past. It just is a hit and miss every year whether we um, have a droughty season or not. All right, so if you are living in Canadian County and you have any gardening questions, any plant questions, horticulture questions, feel free to contact me here at the office. Um, I'd love to help you out. We're here in Calumet in Canadian County and I have um, one of my about to be master gardeners went through the class last year. This is Daniel Pugh and his uh, place and I'm going to let him talk a little bit about some of the features that he wants to um, tell us about in his garden. Well we uh, built the home about 14 years ago and it's five acres here on kind of a hilltop prairie land and it was nothing but Johnson grass and uh, of course we wanted to get rid of that. We started out with uh, a lot of Bermuda grass for a lawn mm -hmm. and we got tired of that and we started to put in little garden, uh, raised gardens here and there uh, and we just kept expanding. The soil is horrible, of course, uh, the clay it took us several years to continually, you know, modify it mm -hmm. and, and, and bring it to where plants would grow. So we started out with a lot of xeric plants, uh, like the salvias and the agastacs, and uh, pretty soon the soil became good enough to where we just started putting in ground cover. The ground cover took off, and uh, everything's looking pretty nice now. I see you have some decorative stonework out here, flagstone. Can you explain a little bit about that? Well, originally when we had the, the raised beds, we had still the Bermuda grass, and I always had to mow around it, and I thought a pathway would be nice. And uh, mm -hmm. I noticed there'd be these big intersections, and uh, it just didn't seem to be lively enough, you know, to complement the, the rest of the, the plants. And so I thought I'd try to take some flagstone and make some stone critters that, mm -hmm. that uh, of course, we love out here. The uh, praying mantis here, we have a turtle and a... Uh, right. A butterfly, a horse, a ladybug, and uh, we just think it's a fun addition to the gardens. Mm -hmm. oh, can you tell me a little bit about the desert willows out here? Well, of course they're great performers, uh, and they're xeric, so that's, that's a benefit there. And we just planted a couple of them there in the middle uh, bed, and the others volunteered. And if they volunteered in the right spot, we, we let them go. And now we have a nice hedge of uh, you know, desert willow. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about some of the challenges that you face out here on the prairie top? Well, living on the hill, of course, is, is nice. You have a, a nice view. But uh, the wind events that we have here in central mm -hmm. Oklahoma can be uh, horrendous. And you can have some plants doing very well, four or five foot bushes, and uh, a microburst will come through and just, you know, snap them in half. Mm -hmm. So you deal with that. These uh, yellow cestrum uh, do real well, and they come back well. But as you might see, we mm -hmm. have some cages around them because they've been snapped. But if you give them a little support, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just uh, one of the things you deal with with the wind. And can you tell me a little bit about the design of this structure? Well, we wanted raised beds uh, because you still have a lot of critter problems out here. You have gophers and, and the deer mm -hmm. and, of course, uh, the weeding. Uh, raised gardens are easier to uh, maintain. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started out with the asparagus bed here. It's about 30 feet long. Mm -hmm. And then each year I built another one. This was a tomato until we, we rotated them last year. Mm -hmm. And then green beans and strawberries and some peppers. And again, being on the hill, you can have a raised bed, but if the wind blows them down, right. it doesn't do you any good. So we 
put up fence around and we have shade cloth all the way around which mm -hmm. allows us to you know at least attempt to have a vegetable garden. And some airflow is good to help prevent diseases right. from well, spreading. Well, on, being on top of the hill here, there's no trouble right. with airflow. <laughs> well, it looks very good. Um, I think there's one more area we would like to look at, and that's your shade garden, if you would like to take us there. Yes, that'd be fun. There's a lot going on out there. Okay. This is a beautiful shade garden. It's huge. Um, and I want you to tell me a little about the history about where it began and what all you have done to make it become this. Well, when we first got here, this was just a, a grove of soap berries. And uh, the old homestead uh, left a lot of debris and uh, old sheds in here. And so we had to clear all that out. That took actually a couple years. And then every, every year it would just grow with cheat grass. It'd be three, four feet mm. tall, nothing you could do about it. And I'd have to mow that. So of course, what better way to stop mowing is plant a garden. Right. And uh, so we started at one end and amending the soil, just like on the south side, we had a, a lot of trouble with the, the red clay. And so we started planting some ground cover, some vinca, mm -hmm. which uh, was aggressive enough to finally take off. We have some creeping euonymus that's also a great ground cover. And, uh, and then we started creating the beds. And uh, again, more plumbago is a good ground cover. We have, uh, uh, we wanted some evergreens, so we had the ewes. And then I wanted again, more walkways, because I think they're, they're, they're good design and style without being too formal. Mm -hmm. There's really some beautiful structures out here, and um, can you tell me a little bit about those? Well, we uh, completed this uh, walkway circuit, uh, so mm -hmm. we wanted some additional interest. So I had a little raised uh, wooden walkway there and uh, mm -hmm. over uh, a little bit further on, we have a Japanese uh, bridge that I, I built with mm -hmm. a wooden boardwalk. We're gonna continue to do more and more of that throughout uh, the garden here. I really appreciate you taking me around. This is beautiful, it's huge. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> it's fun showing it off. I can't imagine all this work doing this in the, I think, short amount of time that you've done it, so I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Yeah. here in Mustang, Oklahoma. That's in Canadian County. And today we're going to talk about one of a uh, very special community garden, the Wild Horse Gardens. And uh, it's been actually on the show in the past and it's moved since then. It's grown in size. It's grown in number of volunteers. The city has really worked with uh, the community garden here and its volunteers. And uh, the head person, the volunteer that's really helped make it happen. And one of my Master Gardener volunteers, Bob Wilson, is going to talk to us a little bit about that. So, hi Bob. Good morning. How are you, Courtney? <laughs> Good. Welcome to Wild Horse Gardens and Market. We're glad you're here. It's great to have uh, Oklahoma Gardening back. That's pretty special for us to be able to, to uh, show people what we do here in the garden. Uh, this is our ninth year that we've been doing this now. So we're, we're, wow. we're not great at it, but we're getting better at it. Thanks to the volunteers. Uh, our garden is totally run and operated by volunteers mm -hmm. with a lot of assistance from the city. They've uh, given us this parcel of land to work on. 
Uh, they've given us all the facilities that we need. We have water, we have a building. So we run our garden uh, kind of on shares here. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of do things on thirds. A third of what we raise, we provide to Kiwanis. And that's where our mm -hmm. garden started nine years ago. We had an opportunity to move to the park. We thought it would be a better exposure for the city, so we moved here three years ago. Uh, another third of what we grow uh, basically goes to all the volunteers that work here. So if you come mm -hmm. down, you spend an hour or so working in the garden, you get to take produce It's a nice home. incentive. <laughs> You're exactly right. We, we like to tell folks that it's just a whole lot easier to garden at home. You come down there and socialize, put an mm -hmm. hour or so work in, take some veggies home with you. It's just a lot easier than trying to do it all by yourself. And then the other third, we have our farmer's market on Wednesdays from 6 to 8 and Saturday mornings from 8 to 11 and that gives us a little income to kind of keep things going around here, buy seed, buy tools, so on and so forth. Right, and that farmer's market has really grown since I've been here, I think. It has. We have a young lady that volunteers for us that does social media and it's made a tremendous right. difference. Uh, she, she does YouTube and uh, Facebook, Facebook and Twitter and all yeah, those things all us old those. folks don't know how to do. <laughs> Uh, and that's made a big difference in getting people to come to our markets. And uh, uh, the vendors that we have kind of varies. They're all local. Uh, everything that we sell is Oklahoma grown produce. Uh, mm -hmm. We probably had a, a total of about 15 vendors last year. Some of them kind of come and go. Some, some just have specialty crops and they be here for a couple of weeks right. while, that, while that crop is in, in season. And then other ones come all year long. So uh, we mm -hmm. run our market normally from about the first weekend in June all the way through September. Right. Okay. Um, would you like to talk about any of the successful or feature plants in your garden? Well, I would. I'd really like to have another one of our volunteers do that. She kind of laid out the garden this year and kind of right. decided what we were going to plant and where at. So I'd like to have Susan Dobbins talk with you about that if we can. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Good morning, Courtney. Nice to see you this Good morning. Good to see you. Um, we just talked to Bob about a little bit about the garden, but I'm going to let you also talk about some things that maybe he didn't talk about. And I also want to mention that Susan helped me on Friday. We had our, um, the Cooperative Extension Service had our Junior Master Gardener Day Camp out here. And even though it was really hot, the kids and our volunteers had a whole lot of fun. Susan was really helpful um, giving the kids a tour of the garden. We planted some things in the keyhole garden over there. And so um, I'm really appreciative of you guys helping us out with extension and um, the volunteers here at Wild Horse Gardens. And I'll let you talk a little bit about um, what the city has done to help you guys out and anything else you might want to mention. Okay. Well, and I'm glad you brought up the the Junior Master Gardener Camp because we had so much fun and that's a big part of our mission here at the garden is not only the growing of the produce and the sharing with the needy mm -hmm. but also the education of kids and that's yeah. why the city asked us to move over here so that the garden would be more available right. to kids and uh, we've had a lot of uh, young volunteers in the garden this yeah. year they've but we've had Cub Scouts we've had brownies and we've just had families come out right. and help us uh, We've replanted the squash a few times because we had a problem with bugs early right. this year, but it's beautiful now. Yeah, um, it is. The, the city helps us with the rototilling, but all the other labor mm -hmm. in the garden comes from us. Volunteers, right. So um, it's just a lot of fun out here. Mm -hmm. And you guys so. are planning to expand even more than this with the farmer's market building and we've got the playground and the splash pad going on over there it really brings a lot of people in to your mm -hmm. garden in the farmers market here so. it does and we're right now we're just a warm season garden mm -hmm. because we're all volunteering right. nobody wants to be out here in, in February but we're going to ex the market is going to end in September but the garden itself will continue until the first frost the right. two rows here are pumpkins that we're growing for Mustangs annual right. spooktacular that's their Halloween celebration and we hope to have some jack-o'-lanterns right. for them and uh, my plan next year is to possibly have the junior master gardener camp out here in october during the kids fall break and have the pumpkins to use for that because kids love pumpkins mm -hmm. so i'm really excited about that i love what you guys have done here and you guys are so committed you have well, I think a lot of volunteers we are helping out. We have probably 30, 35 volunteers, and they're all part-time. We know it's summertime. We know people come and go, and they, they have other plans. 
but uh, it's the gar it's the volunteers that have really made the garden right. what it is this year because as you know the more t care that we can give our plants the better pr produce right. that we'll have right so. well i really appreciate you sharing your time with us and also for your commitment with the garden this is great i love it <laughs> It is a lot of fun. We, we even have people that come out, people that are still working. I'm, I'm retired, but people that are still working come out and just pull weeds because it's a stress reliever. Right, yeah. So. It's, and someone mentioned that it was good therapy it to is. work out here. So Multiple is. purposes out here. This is great. Yeah. <laughs>
Next week, we visit Rogers County, Oklahoma, and the work of the Master Gardeners in the Claremore area. We have a fun children's garden project, and we tour gardens on both ends of the spectrum with a landscape shade garden and a wild zone wildflower prairie. There's so much to see, so be sure and join us next week for more TV You'll Grow to Love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We wish to thank our generous underwriters, Southwood Landscape and Garden Center, and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is provided by Pond Pro Shops, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, and the Oklahoma Horticultural Society.